previous video, I talked about the hilariously awful unaired Wonder Woman TV pilot from 2011, but that is not the only failed Wonder Woman TV pilot. Before Linda Carter's iconic Wonder Woman series in 1975, Producer William Dozier developed a five-minute test pilot for a Wonder Woman TV series in 1967. The pilot was apparently titled, Who's Afraid of Diana Prince? The title is a reference to the play-slash-film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Uh, the movie version was released the previous year in 1966, so that would have been considered funny and topical at the time. The ill-defined plot of this short is kind of ridiculous. Uh, Diana is a single woman who lives with her beleaguered mother, who henpecks at Diana constantly and just wants her to find a man. It starts with Diana on the couch reading the paper during a very loud storm. Diana then falls off the couch for no reason and calls to her mother for help. Diana wants to go help Steve because it's storming and that means that his plane can't fly. But her mother is the overbearing stereotype and wants her to eat first. Oh, don't be silly. Where do you think all that strength comes from? Those gods? No, from my cooking. The whole thing is just very rapid dialogue. There's a lot of back and forth. This can't wait! The nation, the nation needs, needs Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. And what about Wonder Woman? Does the nation care what she needs? Like a fellow, for example, huh? The dynamic is odd. Diana's just like, I have to go save the world. And her mom's like, ugh, what is it with you and your obsession with saving the world? But the fate of the free world depends on me. All right, eat first, save the free world later. You can't be a decent martyr on an empty stomach. After making Diana eat, the mom chastises Diana for eating while the mom is talking. Will you stop eating when I'm talking to you? How will Diana ever find a man if she's out flying all the time? How do you expect to get a husband flying around all the time? Isn't it about time that you decide to stay in one spot for a change? I guess Steve just doesn't count as a potential suitor. There is a serious dig at, like, some random girl in the neighborhood for having premarital intercourse. Look at Lucille Maxwell. Why, she's 24 years old and got three kids already. But Mom, she's not married. The mom mentions that she's set up Diana with a bunch of men who have, like, credentials after their name. I get you dates with the finest and the most eligible MDs, CPAs, PhDs, and what happens? Nothing. But Diana spells out that she's looking for an M-A-N. The man. What do you want, anyway? An M-A-N. <gasps> and then the mom gets the vapors for some reason? that I don't understand because doesn't that mean that you guys are on the same page here? Mom, you must go see a doctor. Doctor? What kind of a doctor knows the pain in a mother's heart whose daughter is single and 28 million years old? Diana does a spinning door transformation into Wonder Woman, and then we get this narration. Wonder Woman, who knows she has the strength of Hercules, who knows she has the wisdom of Athena? Who knows she has the speed of Mercury? And who thinks she has the beauty of Aphrodite? She thinks she is the beauty of Aphrodite? This must just be a joke that I don't get. Because then Wonder Woman goes and she strikes a bunch of poses in front of the mirror. She blows kisses to herself. And she does this for almost a solid minute. She does this for maybe like 57 seconds out of a 4 minute and 45 second film. So it's a lot. I know it's hard to see in this grainy old footage, but the reflection is played by a different actress. The reflection is played by Linda Harrison, who is best known for the original Planet of the Apes. The implication being that Ellie Wood Walker, the actress playing Wonder Woman, is kind of plain. But Linda Harrison, playing the reflection, is an absolute 
bombshell. And like, she totally is, I'm not gonna lie, look at these pictures. Then she calls herself a vision of enchantment and majestically flies away. Away, you vision of enchantment. You've got a job to do. Her mom yells after her to go visit her uncle and call when she gets there. I personally think it would have fit just a little bit better with the tone for the mom to ask her to like, pick up some cheese from that nice little shop in Norway on your way back. But I wasn't making TV pilots in the 60s. You can find the entire thing online pretty easily if you want to watch it for yourself. It's very odd, but it's also supposed to be very odd. You see, the producer, William Dozier, was the same man that created the Adam West Batman TV series, with all of its puns and bams and bat accessories. Hand me down the shark repellent bat spray. So his intention was likely another campy superhero comedy. Low stakes, no drama, lots of jokes. This five minute abomination is not supposed to be an actual episode or even a concrete example of a script. I think we've kind of gotten used to the idea that a TV pilot will double as the first episode if the series is picked up, but that's not always the case. Like even nowadays, that's not always the case. Clearly, this is just more of a short to pitch the character and the tone. I wonder what the network's reaction to this was at the time, because we look at this through a modern lens with a very strong frame of reference for what a Wonder Woman adaptation should look like. So of course, we see this and we think, wow, it is very bad. Obviously, the show didn't get made, so the network must not have liked it either. But I doubt that it was rejected because of, you know, anything related to Wonder Woman's character integrity. It's more likely they just thought it wasn't a marketable concept. Also, Wonder Woman is not the only popular female superhero to get the short film treatment from William Dozier. While he was working on Batman, he wanted to introduce the character of Batgirl in season three. So he put together a seven minute short film in order to pitch the character to the network and ask for approval. A lot of people think that this video was actually a failed pilot for a Batgirl TV series, but from what I can find, that's not actually the case. It was a character pitch for Batman. Batman and Robin take in a new partner. Introducing Yvonne Craig as Batgirl. This was also coincidentally made in 1967, and the network approved the use of the character, so now this video exists as a fun little promotional short film. In this seven minute short, we see Barbara Gordon working as a librarian. Actually, I should mention the introductory narration that tells you the four types of girls that you can find in Gotham City. Gotham City, like any other large metropolis, abounds in girls of all shapes and sizes. Debutantes, nurses, stenographers, and librarians. Debutantes, nurses, stenographers, and librarians. The only jobs women can have. So Barbara Gordon helps Bruce Wayne look for a book on butterflies. This is the only book on the Blue Monarch Heliconius butterfly that's still in print. Then she flirts with her dad. Well, how about tomorrow night? It's a definite date. Bye, handsome. But it turns out that the villain, Killer Moth, is in the library. So Barbara goes to the hidden closet that she has in the wall of the library, because of course you can independently install hidden closets in a public building without a permit, and changes into Batgirl. I actually really like that her skirt becomes a cape. 
I'm going to just go ahead and assume that all of her skirts are capes. Killer Moth traps Batman and Robin in a cocoon. So Batgirl busts in and kind of dances around, fighting the bad guys with minimal actual fighting. She takes out a compact that disintegrates the cocoon. It's my electronic Batgirl compact with a laser beam. Which will destroy anything. Hold up. This girl has a laser that can destroy anything? I have a bunch of follow-up questions specifically about this laser. Batman and Robin throw some actual punches while Batgirl perches sexily on the desk. She won't tell Batman her true identity. Come now, Batman. Have you ever revealed your true identity? <laughs> Mine must be kept as secret as yours. Batgirl slips away while Batman is distracted. And then Batman basically delivers his Batgirl sales pitch right to the camera. Yes, she's gone. But I suspect we haven't seen the last of her, whoever she is beneath that mask of hers. A new member of our team? Or a crime? Fighting? Rival? That Batgirl sure was cool. I wonder if we've seen the last of her. Only the network can see for sure. And then we glimpse Batgirl and her Batgirl motorcycle while the narration also delivers a secondary sales pitch for Batgirl. Is the dynamic duo destined to become the triumphant trio? Only time will tell us more. You can find this video online too. Obviously Batgirl fared much better than Wonder Woman. Although not too much better, because she was only on Batman for one season before the entire show was cancelled. There is a world of difference between these two superhero pitch projects, though. There is a tremendous increase in quality for Batgirl, which I would attribute to the fact that Batman was an established TV series with its own set of existing resources, as well as an already established tone and cast and crew and like all of the things you need to make a show. One thing that the 1967 and 2011 failed Wonder Woman pilots have in common is the whole single girl looking for a man punchline. In both versions, Wonder Woman is beautiful and confident, but Diana Prince has bangs and glasses. She sits alone on the couch. By the way, there was another Wonder Woman film from 1974 starring Kathy Lee Crosby. And I used air quotes for film because it was actually another failed pilot. But it did air as a made-for-TV movie, it just never became a series, as was originally intended. I also should have used air quotes for Wonder Woman because Kathy Lee Crosby did not play the superhero Amazonian warrior that we all know and love. Her Wonder Woman was more of like a special agent type who worked with the government and wore this god-awful thing that I want to call a jumpsuit, but it's technically not a jumpsuit. There aren't words. Even Kathy Lee Crosby herself thought the outfit was weird. What do you think about the outfit? Interesting, colorful. It looks like I have a stewardess pin on me. What Look at what? those bracelets. And she was blonde. No thank you. By the way, one of my struggles that I forgot about when I did that first Wonder Woman video is the fact that I struggled to say Wonder Woman. When I'm speaking quickly and I'm not fully enunciating, it kind of comes out just slurred like Wonder Woman. And I just hear myself saying it over and over and over. It haunts me.